Hi, just going to give you a video to talk about the uh, moving average z-score. It's basically a, an indicator that tells you how far a moving average has kind of moved from the mean, kind of using the standard deviations basically. And so this is a tool that works for your charts, it'll work on the scanner, and it'll work in radar screen. And you can either configure a simple or an exponential moving average, whatever you want to do. And here's my email and the website. If you've got any questions or comments, please send me an email there. And here's the, the legal information. I would urge you to pause the video and read this completely. Basically, we're saying everything that we do is for educational purposes only. There's no advice to buy or sell anything. We're not making any recommendations to buy or sell anything. All the trading and investing you do is fully your responsibility, and you need to get the, uh, the, the training and help from the appropriate professionals to do that. Again, everything we do is for um, educational purposes only. Okay, I've got the indicator pulled up in a, uh, in a workspace, and it's on radar screen, and then the charts just have a daily and a weekly chart. It'll work on any time frame. Just wanted to show you... Let's see, this is a, uh, for set for the default, this is like a 21 period simple moving average. So I just went ahead and put that up there so you can kind of see how that tracks. And then this is for a, a 10 period simple moving average. And that's shown up here just so you can kind of see how that, how that looks. So let's see, let's talk about the radar screen here first. You can see the, uh, here's the information that's displayed. This is the uh, moving average z-score. So, you know, this will correspond you can see like it's 1.4 and 1.4 over here in um on the chart and then the low thresh and the high thresh these are things that are basically this corresponds to this red and green line here these are dynamic lines that um, are constantly updated basically it's kind of a um, uh, an average of the prior few peaks to kind of give you uh, just an idea of kind of how far this thing has ranged in the past and then there's also the hard um, two and two and a half standard deviation lines that are shown on here as well. So you can choose not to show these lines if you want. I'll show you that when we do the chart. But just to let you know, that's what this corresponds to. And if you choose not to use these lines, then this is just going to be the, uh, I think the uh, standard deviation is going to be shown in here of two and minus of or uh, yeah minus two and two for the low and the high. And so you can see. If the uh, current z-score exceeds um, the high thresh, then you're going to—it's going to be shown in a in a red color. You can configure the color you want to, that to be. So you can see right here on the daily chart, Facebook has exceeded the uh, the daily thresh. So we're saying we're extended from the uh, from the moving average based on prior kind of history. And you can see, sure enough, you know we're we're way up there. So that's that and then the, obviously the low thresh is the green line here and if we had exceeded below that we would have had an indication over here as well but none of these have at the time and this is the uh, thresh status it'll basically be zero if it's kind of in between be one if it's greater or minus one if it's below and the main thing I have I use this in the scanner just to find things that maybe have been extended too far you know one way or the other so let's see let's look at the chart here so i'll come over here and we'll say format that so you can see the uh, inputs the length of the moving average do you want to use a simple moving average if you put false it'll be an exponential moving average and here's the the z-score color so this plot would be is in yellow and th there is um i think it's like a three period a little moving average just to kind of smooth this out. If you hit false here, you'll get the the actual data, so it's just a lot more you know noisy. Um, let's see range history that true you know turns this these two lines on off and they would they would disappear. And then this is in just for radar screen. There's a use the threshold that's uh, right here to set this up to where if it exceeds it or not. And then this is the threshold you want the alert to uh, to be triggered on. If you're, you could use this and this will be the number that shows up over here. If you turn off the range history, you can set a hard-coded standard deviation above and below. But if you have the range history on, then it's going to be the actual dynamic um, lines that are used to, as the uh, threshold that can be exceeded. 
and let's see if it's above the threshold it's shown in red and if it's below it's shown in green so so that's pretty much that and let me show you this over here just it's the same inputs but just to show you see if I say uh, use threshold and radar screen if I set that to false you can see then it's the uh, the, the this is the th since we have the um, the range history on you get that so but then if we let's see if we say um, if we do range history we turn that to false we set that to let's see we'll leave that to false see and that I'm sorry that my mistake that's the one that uses if you want to have these things um, generate a, a color code if they if they break the threshold I misspoke there that's what this uh, use threshold RS so now if we set this to true we'll get the one and a half and the minus one and a half value but nothing has broken the, those threshold values yet so if we come back over here and then we say the default of using the range history we say okay and that gets that so hopefully that made sense and my uh, explanation maybe it's a little garbled there but basically you can you can turn off the uh, threshold and just have the value or you can have the values where you get an alert color basically if if the uh, threshold is exceeded and this is the default here so let's see what else what else um i guess just to kind of like i said to show you kind of what i do you know you can kind of see just as things come along say so, well you know it's extended pretty far down just kind of going on the theory that most things don't stray too far from their moving average for for too long it just kind of gives you an indication you know, maybe maybe this is going to come back okay we've got ex getting extended to the upside doesn't mean it can't keep going up but you know we've kind of it's one of those would you want to buy something when it's potentially extended or would you want to buy it you know down in here perhaps and so again you can kind of see we, we come down okay start coming back toward the average of course this is just kind of flat does it again a good dip below now we come up and obviously we get a pretty good little move here and a lot of times when things are trending usually you might just get the uh, you get a return pretty much to the zero line back to the uh, close to the moving average so just kind of one of those things you have to kind of see the personality of the stocks you're trading what they're doing but I've noticed that a lot in trending markets you might not get a pull back all the way down to the lower level you might just get it around to the uh, to the moving average which you would expect you know a lot of things usually you know come kind of go up and then come back and touch maybe the 20 or the 50 or you know whatever moving average you're looking at so let me see let's go look at the scanner real quick okay I've just got the scanner window pulled up with the the uh, indicator installed and I'm just kind of my standard I look for things over twenty dollars that have a million shares at least traded a day so this is the indicator defaults this is saying I want to see um, something that's gone below it's a 21 period moving average simple moving average so it's below the the zero which like I said the thrush status is in plus one zero or minus one so we're looking for things basically with a minus one that are below their um, current uh, dynamic range and so after running the scan this is on April 30th 2020 you know the market had had a good drop and has come back 60 percent give or take so a lot of things are at their high but there's this one stock here who's actually uh, below the uh, the most recent kind of dynamic threshold so we'll go take a look at him okay so here's RWM he's in radar screen you can see we've got the he's at minus 1.28 which is below his most recent kind of range which is 0.9 so we can see that over here on the chart that it's come up deleted or I'm sorry <laughs> dip down I guess this is the uh, looks like the uh, short 
ETF for the for the Russell. So he's come down. So you know we're kind of potentially in a range where it might start wanting to go up. We've kind of extended, you know, kind of the what I'd say the typical ranges over the past, you know, what probably half you. Yeah, six months. So just kind of a useful tool. You can see this is shown in green. Remember we can configure the colors. So if it's below the low thresh it'll be green and if it's above the high thresh it'll be red. So again you can see that. We got the minus one over here that we found in the uh, scanner. So you can kind of see how that ties together. So hopefully this is something useful for you. Go ahead and give it a try. I think there's a 10 day free trial so try it out. Let me know if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for improvement. Thanks.